Mash, the magicless yet overwhelmingly powerful adopted son of Regro Bernadette, was roped into a plan by magic officer Brad Coleman. The plan for him to join Easton Magic Academy and become a divine visionary. One of the group, the strongest magicians around with great influence in their world. After breezing through the entrance exam and making Lemon Urban fall for him, he went on to befriend Finn Ames, crush Lloyd Cavill, and even bury the vice principal himself. Now thanks to his reputation from those latest acts, the Duello MVP of their Adler dorm, Tom Knowles, has decided to recruit him. The sport Tom has recruited MASH for is an aerial one played while riding brooms. Duello. Unfortunately, he's overlooked one very important factor despite MASH's warnings. He can't fly. Seeing MASH standing blankly down on the grass, Tom rushes towards him. In an extremely passionate speech, he makes a weird analogy about bamboo shoots and explains the rules of Duello. Essentially, it's just soccer on brooms since you just need to get the ball through the goal and the team with most goals wins. After giving some parting words of encouragement to MASH, Tom mounts his broom only for one of the opposing team's members to crash into him hard enough to break his arm. The opponent, a member of Lang Dorm, taunts the boy, telling him all the matters in this situation is winning. As MASH rushes over to Tom in concern, the duello player turns to his junior and speaks in a serious tone. Despite what seems to be a sure loss now, he wants MASH to know that winning is never the most important thing. What comes above all else is making sure that you try your hardest. Hearing Tom be so nice and sincere and seeing his team plummeting to defeat awakens something within MASH. Gripping his broom, he shocks Tom with the intensity now in his form. With a mighty burst of power from his legs, MASH takes to the sky and miraculously enough, he stays there. Still not really flying though, he's just using the air pressure from his legs, moving at super speed to stay afloat. From his fixed position in the air, MASH proceeds to shock everyone present with his next actions. Using his insane strength, he throws a curveball that shoots straight through the opponents and the goal and then turns back to return to him. Repeatedly, using this exact shock with such ridiculous speed that nobody can stop him, MASH ends up earning his team a lead of over 900 points. After the match, Tom embraces MASH in happiness, overjoyed that his faith in him was misplaced. That night, a mysterious man reads of MASH's latest conquest in the Academy newspaper. From the looks of it, his intentions are far from harmless. The next day, MASH is being dotted over by all three of his newest friends. When the mystery man shows himself, this is Lance Crown, the first ranked student in the entrance exams. After asking MASH if he wants to do something fun, he puts out a magical bottle and uncorks it. Shockingly enough, this results in MASH's friends being sucked in and trapped inside it. Before turning away, Lance tells MASH to come to the forest next to the Owl Hut. With that, he flicks his wand and disappears in a burst of flames. Not long after, the two boys face off in said forest. As they size each other up, Lance reveals two silver coins in his possession. Looking at Mash, he confirms the boy wants them as well for the sake of becoming a divine visionary. Meanwhile, Tom shows surprise at Lance possessing the coins. Between those and the fact that he has two magic lines, he must be incredibly powerful. In this world, double line magic users are an extremely rare breed with stronger magic than most. After challenging Mash to a duel for each other's silver coins, Lance criticizes the boy's decision to help Lime in the entrance exams. Mash, on the other hand, simply wants to get on with it and says as such. Deciding to comply, Lance pulls out his wand and starts by using Graviole, a gravity spell. With this, he flattens the entire area of the forest around them into a battlefield. With their stage ready, Mash leaps at Lance with his fist raised. Before he can reach his opponent though, Lance uses Graviole to crush him into the ground. Under the effects of increased gravity, there's little Mash can do. That is, until he finds a way out. Digging his fist into the ground itself, he finds a massive root and rips it out with such force that Lance is launched backwards and onto the destroyed ground. With Lance rattled, Mash moves to attack him once again. This time though, he moves so fast, even Graviola can't stop him. Launching hit after hit that's only narrowly dodged, he ends up knocking Lance's pendant off. Looking inside, he sees a picture of the boy's little sister. After returning it, Lance goes on a rather unhinged charade about what the most important thing in the world is. According to him, it's his little sister. Walking up to the edge of a cliff, Lance holds the bottle containing Mash's friends over it. Here he tells Mash that he'll drop them and use Gravioli to speed up their fall. As Mash goes to save them, he'll attack and defeat him. While he normally wouldn't do such things, he'll do anything to become a divine visionary. To attain the power to crush the current system, one that would condemn his little sister to death. All because she has an illness that's taking away her magic. Turning his head back to Mash, he's shocked to see the boy in workout gear. What's more, he's muttering about muscle strengthening magic while getting into a crouching start position. Already rattled, Lance drops the bottle and activates Gravioli. Raising his eyes, Mash says that losing 
and not rescuing someone, neither are an option in his eyes. Before Lance can even register the following events, Mash uses what he calls Big Bang Dash. In just a fraction of a second, he races down the cliff face, gets the bottle, and races back up. Now facing Lance, he asks to end the duel because he doesn't think he's a bad guy. After all, the bottle he dropped was a fake. Even as Lance insists on continuing, Mash just speeds through all his pockets and recovers the real bottle. Confused and frustrated, Lance yells out to question why Mash would give up the chance to get silver coins. When he responds though, the double line magician is reminded of something his sister once said. His heart softened and his anger disappeared. He only can accept Mash's decision to end the fight. As he walks away though, he tosses a silver coin to Mash, knowing he's the true victor today. Meanwhile, Mash is left to deal with the maniacal fawning of his now freed friends. While discussing how five silver coins can be combined to make one gold, Finn and Mash realize they have a potions assignment due soon. While Finn starts panicking, they find themselves saved by the appearance of Lance. The top ranker decides to help the two with their assignment, but not before being knocked out by a little sister blast from Mash. In the kitchens, he teaches the duo how to calm a mandragora and use it as an ingredient. While Finn succeeds after a couple of attempts, Mash ends up just slapping his into submission. Following that, he somehow manages to turn the potions assignment into a cream puff cooking session using mandragora. The next day, the trio are out at the edge of the forest where the day's class is to take place. While they're waiting for it to start, a brash young man named Dot Barrett appears. Stepping up to them, with a cocky attitude, he starts talking down to Mash, who he recognizes from the rumors of him. He soon crushes through when he sees Lemon running up to him. As an eternally single man, he hates nothing more than guys who get the attention of women. While he is raging out over the situation, their professor, Mr. Adler, appears. He tells them their task for the day is to exterminate forest scorpions, depending on the shape of the stones on their foreheads. Each kill could earn them a silver coin. Before Mash and Lance can enter the forest, they are met by an upper-class man, Silva. After talking down to Mash for what he believes to be arrogance, he uses earth magic to gut-punch the boy with a rocky pillar. As he walks away to avoid punishment from the teacher, Lance warns Mash that he's infamous for his violent tendencies. Turns out though, Mash couldn't care less about the attack. He's just glad his cream puff is unharmed. With that, the two head into the forest. Ironically enough, Mash ends up not only separated from Lance, but also meets up with Dot Barrett. Annoyed by the guy's reaction, Mash slaps him silent. In response, Dot is about to attack when they hear a girl screaming out. Quickly, they rush over to help. Coming onto the scene of a boy threatening a girl, Dot uses his explosion magic to promptly beat him. Unfortunately, his lack of experience talking to girls shows itself when the girl comes over to thank him. Being more than a little flustered, he pretty much makes an absolute fool of himself. This continues to be the case for a while as the trio now move together. Though Dot's doing all he can to try and act cool, unknown to him, the girl, Lauren, is actually able to make men fall for her with her magic. With Dot already smitten, she turns to Mash. However, she's left shocked when the boy shows absolutely zero attraction towards her. Deciding to settle with just pulling Dot's strings for now, she goes on to sell him a story about a second year named Silva, who keeps harassing her. Fully under her spell, Dot announces that she's going to beat Silva to a pulp. Unfortunately for him, this statement is followed by Silva himself appearing. As the two face off, Dot fires a massive barrage of explosions at Silva, thinking it to be a quick victory. However, as the smoke and dust settle, Silva is revealed to be unharmed behind a shield of rock. Mocking Dot's attempt, he shoots a rock pillar out of the ground and knocks down Dot. Getting back up, Dot steals himself to defend Lauren. Though the situation seems desperate, he manages to work out a bet with Silva. If he can withstand 10 hits from his magic, Silva has to let them go. Of course, this doesn't go too well for Dot. Despite his tenacity and burning will, the damage from the 10 hits leaves him gasping and bloodied on the ground. As he lays at Silva's feet, after the 10th hit, something shocking happens. Lauren, the girl he's fighting for in the first place, joins Silva and reveals this to have been a ruse all along. As the two openly mock Dot, Mash has finally had enough. A cream puff finds itself thrown right into Silva's open mouth. Walking up to them, Mash tells Silva it's his turn for the 10 hit challenge. The scumbag can come right at him. Cocky as ever, Silva starts spamming rock pillars at Mash, bragging about how he earned two gold coins in his first year the whole time. Unfortunately and rather unexpectedly for him, the attacks do little more than rough Mash up a bit and anger him. Chanting out tricep magic to excuse his absurd strength, Mash goes on to break right through Silva's rock magic with his bare fists. 
Getting into his guard, he punches the senior's face hard enough to send him flying. As Silva sits on the ground, blood pouring down his nose, he goes into denial at the idea of MASH being so much stronger than him. Standing up, he tries to attack once more. But yet again, MASH simply demolishes the magic and gut punches Silva hard enough to make him barf out further blood, all with a single punch. On the ground, once more, Silva starts panicking. One more hit like that could very well mean death for him. As he thinks this through, Mash simply sits down on a tree trunk and says, that's two down. After all, Silva is taking the same 10 hit challenge, dot did, isn't he? Silva can only desperately hope for a way out of this. Suddenly, a massive beast appears. A star-stoned forest scorpion worth two silver coins. Though Silva believes this to be his ticket out, those hopes are crushed in an instant. With a simple slap, Mash smacks the thing into orbit and gets the star stone. Seeing Silva's pitiful and terrified form though, Mash decides to end things here. He can't help but feel bad for him. He does go on to suplex the breath out of a cocky Lauren though. Later, Mash and Dot reunite with his friends who formed a group. Before parting ways, Mash and Dot form a bond of somewhat friendly rivalry. As they bicker, Lance finally says his part. He reveals Silva's attack on him was a targeted one. The Langdorm is well known for its belief in blood purity and their superiority to normal people. As a member of Langdorm, Silva was likely sent to steal the coins of Adler Dorm students. The dorm with most students of common birth. The ones to send Silva were likely the dorm's elite, the Magia Lupus. Thanks to the silver coins he earned today, Mash now has a full gold coin. With that, he'll be a bigger target than ever. Keeping this in mind, Lance warns him to stay away from Lang and always stick around a doormate. At the time of their next class, Mash does the opposite. After getting lost in the hallways, he tries to go through a random door. Here his tendency to forget where to push or pull comes in. Deciding to throw caution to the wind, he just rips it off and walks in. As expected from his luck, the room he's walked into is the meeting room of the Magia Lupus itself. And in front of him, on a raised platform, a magic user with not two, not even three, but four lines stands. And he's talking to a doll. The end for now. Thanks for watching. If you like this recap, please consider to like and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to be notified of any new recaps. And while you're at it, check out this new anime recap appearing on the screen.